Hey everybody, it's Dustin again with the WebEx Devices team. And today on the WebEx Edge, we're just gonna take a few minutes to discuss a little something called macros. Now, we've done a couple videos around room intelligence and about how we are using the macro engine on the devices to be able to create some alerts, uh, also be able to talk about some future stuff uh, inside of uh, leveraging Control Hub, leveraging our API, et cetera. Um, we could do uh, a ton of videos on this and probably never even scratch the surface. But what I thought I would do is do a quick little intro video uh, to help people that are just getting started out or they wanted to learn a little bit more about macros in general. Um, just going to show you some of the great things that our team in Oslo has done to try to make this uh, easier for you as well as give you some help, tutorials, and examples. So let's go ahead and get started here. And give me just a second here. Going to switch over to a different view. So what I've got here, first of all, is, is I encourage everyone to go to uh, developer.cisco.com. There's also developer.webex.com, which is more specific to WebEx APIs, especially when you look at the cloud APIs. But just in general, going here is a great resource to be able to get some knowledge. Um, there's some video courses, learning tracks, some sandboxes, uh, code exchange, so you can kind of share and get some different ideas with people in the community. Uh, so definitely check this out. Um, definitely much broader than what we're going to go over today, but I wanted to at least point that out as a good starting guide. And now we're going to go directly to uh, one of my systems here and kind of show you a little bit about some of the enhancements that we have and um, how I think this is a great way to get a primer or get started on programming macros yourself. So I'm in a uh, codec here. Now this would apply for a cloud register device or an on-prem device. Um, and this is uh, some changes that are more recent. So if you're running older code, you probably don't have this exact UI, something maybe a little bit similar, but definitely upgrade because you're going to see some of these great enhancements that we have. Um, but if you go to the integration tab, we're going to go specifically to the macro editor. And in here, when this pops up, if you've never enabled macros, you're going to get this little uh, prompt right here to make sure that they're actually enabled. We keep them disabled by default. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and enable these right here. And what you're going to see is this new kind of um, interface here. And on the right side, you've actually got this help tutorial uh, kind of uh, section over here on the right hand side, which is really what I wanted to focus on. So over here, you have the ability to do things like import macros from files. So if you have one that's been shared, um, we've got, uh, there's all kinds of resources out there on GitHub, uh, people that are sharing out different types of macros to do certain things. This is where you can create a new macro. Um, we're not going to go into to a, to, to a whole lot of this. Again, I want to kind of just get a, give more of an intro and talk more on this right-hand side here. Um, but the, the, the really kind of the, the neat thing about this is the, um, with this new help section here, which you can kind of hide that if you're a little more experienced, uh, and click on the help button here to bring it back. Um, we have an introduction here, which is a great way for you to kind of start about learning uh, about the, uh, the macros themselves. There's great links here to current XAPI documentation. Uh, these are the XAPIs that we're going to be using that are built into RoomOS to be able to do certain things. Um, and kind of a, a great little uh, idea here of a couple things of showing you some basic commands uh, and things that you can do with actual examples. Um, the other cool thing about this is that um, you have the, uh, the capability here to uh, load snippets. So if you do have something that you want to kind of play around with, you can load that snippet and it'll actually populate it into a macro for you. And I want to demo that here in a second. But I want to go over these other tabs because uh, one of my new favorite ones here is the tutorial. Now, you may have seen this online floating around as a PDF, but this tutorial is fantastic um, because it's got these different sections here about getting started, talking about specific um, features or things that you may want to do. Um, especially like one that I personally struggle with, which is uh, promises. Um, but things from timers to different modules, scheduling, um, some different tips, um, everything from just uh, the invoking commands, uh, doing multiple arguments, um, everything here. So if you click on any of these sections, and I'm just going to kind of scroll through here, um, this is a great uh, learning resource for you to understand the different types of uh, commands, statuses, configurations, things that you can do. Uh, as well as a bunch of getting started, um, uh, again, examples for you here to go through and learn about. So not going to go through everything specifically, but I wanted to kind of show you that this was there. Another thing I want to show you, which is absolutely fantastic, is the examples tab. So here, um, these are a lot of examples that we have built in, which allows you to take something that is a working macro, bring it in 
turn it on, see how it works, but learn how to you know, make changes to it or manipulate it or, um, or just kind of learn how these functions and how these uh, commands work to help you be able to do uh, and kind of make these your own. Uh, I always use the example of a PowerPoint. First time you ever saw it, you were probably amazed, but if you went into PowerPoint and you started from scratch, it would be a little daunting. But what did you do? You found out a great PowerPoint, you borrowed it from someone, and then you kind of learned to change the text, change the title, change some images, make it your own. But eventually, as you used it and learned, you got pretty good at it, and then now you were using templates inside of uh, PowerPoint, uh, or just kind of creating them from scratch. Very similar here. So if you look at this, you've got a lot of great little, um, uh, you know, some examples that you can do here, including, you know, one that's actually quite relevant here late, uh, uh, recently with a quick dial. Um, but all you have to do is actually hit the load example. And um, this also is going to give you something that uh, just kind of mention. Um, some of these macros also have the, uh, the need to have a UI extension that goes along with them. And that's what's actually going to put those buttons that you've seen from my um, other videos. Uh, so when you import one of these examples, it's going to say this one requires an extensions panel or a button on a touch 10, for example. Um, do you want to import it? And um, this is giving you that option. I'm going to go ahead and hit the import here so you can see what will happen. But as you notice here, this has created this uh, macro for me and everything's already been populated here. So as long as I save this by hitting the save icon up here, and then um, just because I saved it doesn't mean it's uh, enabled. I then toggle it on to enable it, this macro will actually now be working. Um, and so what I can do now is, just to kind of give you an idea on the UI side, I'm going to go back here, hit the Cisco logo, go back to my integration tab, hit the UI extensions editor, and you'll see here's that quick dial UI uh, panel that was created. So everything that's in that macro corresponds to um, this panel. So you can see how when you're referencing you know, panels or widget IDs, this gives you an example of exactly what uh, you would be referencing on your touch device. So going back to my integration macro editor here, and we'll let this load back up. You'll see I still have my macro available to me here. More examples, I can create those. Um, even in the tutorial, taking a step back here, if I look at um, you know, working with events, uh, and I'm going to create a new macro here just to keep a clean slate. Um, but if you see these, um, this explains to me like different ways to do different types of things with some descriptions, talking about event listeners. So again, I can very easily just hit load snippet. It's going to load that into my macro for me and I can customize it and learn about how to do this particular macro. Um, and then the last thing I want to show you here is if I scroll back up to the top, I do have a shortcuts tab here. This is basically going to show me some little quick shortcuts uh, I can do inside my code editor, as well as some links to um, talk about how uh, we're embedding an editor into here. That's why you're getting these cool colors and some autofill capabilities uh, available to you. Again, a lot to talk about here, but I really just wanted to point this out because uh, this is a great way for you to learn, get better, get some help specifically in regards to uh, macros, especially if you're getting started. So encourage everyone to do that. A lot more videos to come, a lot more resources. Wanted to keep this one not too long, but introduce everybody to uh, macros. So thanks for watching, and uh, if you have any questions, just comment below, and uh, we'll see you on the next video.